All right, I'm here with Juno and Zoe. These are some treats, and this is the roadmap to success. Um, so basically, um, fundamentally, I think the biggest issue here is sh this is one of the highest energy dogs I've probably worked with. She's six years old, and she has the, pup the energy level of a puppy. I don't think she's getting in the, anywhere nearly enough exercise. I think she probably would be a great hunting dog and working dog instead of a, a family pet, but she's a family pet. So I talked a great length about how we can exercise her. So remember, on, on walks, dogs burn, sit. See how the energy came down? Nice. So uh, dogs burn more energy on a walk by sniffing, so let them sniff. Um, let them walk for duration instead, uh, distance, uh, excuse me, time instead of uh, completing a circuit. Sit. You're gonna have to wait for this one for a sec. Um, and so uh, let them sniff as long as it's safe to do so. Remember, dogs don't walk in straight lines. Um, and I'd like to have you guys probably walking them separately so they can have a little bit of practice independently. And I think that they kind of cascade over to each, to each other, but also helping them practice being, uh, doing some activities independent is going to help them pay more attention to the handler, which both these dogs need more over here for sure. Um, we also went over, uh, you can also get a doggy backpack, fill it up with weight. Make sure you check with your vet to make sure there's no mobility issues for that and they don't have any problems. Um, we can play tug of war. Um, some people say you shouldn't. That's a great thing because they have bad uh, bite inhibition. Uh, they're very mouthy. So every time that they touch you with the teeth when you're playing tug of war, you drop the toy and then the game is over. That's a nice way to use an operant conditioning to teach the dog touching with the teeth is the end of fun. So just learn not to do that. Um, we can also play fetch, a uh, great way to burn energy. You can dog ski, as I showed you in that video. If one of you guys can ride a skateboard or rollerblades or whatever, that's a great way to burn energy. Um, those are physical forms of exercise. And we can also do the Doggy Stairmaster, but like I said, the Doggy Stairmaster, I'd like you to keep that in your back pocket and use that in our emergencies or urgent situations. Everything else would be more pre preferable because that's a really repetitive activity. But you saw how quickly it worked. Um, and you could do, uh, let me see, also we need to do scent game or uh, do mental stimulation. Scent games, so as simple as just like going like, hunt, night, what, hunt, <laughs> hunt. You gotta go get it, hunt. Nice. So you throw one treat uh, and then you say marker word when they look it up. Remember, this is unusual. You usually say the marker word for the action and then they give them the treat afterwards. In this case, getting the treat is the action. This is called cookie in a corner. Uh, if you need, if I forgot about any of these things, message me. I have videos I can share with you. So um, Google scent games, there's a lot of variants of hiding treats or hiding uh, uh, lures around your house. Your dog has to use his own to find them. That drains a lot of energy and is a great way to give them an exercise, uh, some mental stimulation, which drains energy in the house where you don't have to do it with them. Um, let me see, I'd also like the guardians to get a snuffle mat. I'd really like to see them get two and feed both dogs out of its own snuffle mat. So now we can do the relaxation protocol as I talked about in one of the videos there, and then invite them to come over and eat one at a time. So maybe have her come over and eat while she's eating, I'm practicing waiting. And then when uh, Zoe's done eating, Zoe goes over and the guardian practices the relaxation protocol, and then she gets released and she gets to eat, and Juno gets to eat without having her uh, you know, hanging out next to her. Um, let me see. Uh, so the snuffle mat will burn energy. Get uh, uh, the Omega Paw Treat Ball um, and, or other puzzles. Those are great ways to burn energy. If they like uh, peanut butter, I get Kongs, fill them up with peanut butter, get those lick mats. And you can also start freezing those after they've had them a couple times. That makes it even harder uh, to get that, uh, more work to get that energy or to get the peanut butter, which burns more energy. Also, uh, remember to exercise them before things are going, you know, things are coming up. You have a meeting, you have guests come over, exercise them. Keep that exercise journal, like I talked about. New page for the end of the beginning of the day, Zoe, uh, Juno, and then the time and how many extra, how many, how many fetches, the time and how long the walk was, the time and number of up downs on the stairs, the time when you fed them, the time when they had unwanted behaviors, um, and then at the end of the day, give them a letter, each dog a letter grade A through F, and then if it was anything other than A, the next day play around with the elements instead of maybe fetching 15 times, maybe fetch 20 times, or instead of playing fetch twice a day, maybe fetch three times a day. Remember the best exercise for dogs is gonna be closer to every two to four hours. For her, it might even be more than that. But if we're gonna have a meeting or something like that, we can exercise them or guest and set them up for success. Yeah, I'm gonna do it this way so you don't rip off my watch. Um, but again, this is a lack of impulse control. I'm holding treats here to keep them in the shot, but these are low value treats and they're both don't really have uh, much self-control because they don't practice a lot of rules. They don't practice the stuff we talked about above, except for when the guardians sit down to do it. But it's like coming up with a lifestyle. We wanna kinda do this stuff all the time. And if you get in a habit of doing it all the time, after a while, you won't even recognize that you're doing this exercise. You'll be watching TV while you're playing the hand targeting game or whatever it is, and you don't recognize the dog's waiting 
for you to do the hand target again. They're sitting there patiently waiting. Um, hand targeting, uh, another video for that. So you throw your hand, make sure it's a big movement. And then pull back and chop closer. Nice. So you say nice when the dog touches and notices your hand, and then you put the treat on your hand. And eventually you go, nice. And eventually you can call the dog from like 15 feet away, and that's using that positive interrupter sound of, see how they're both their heads snapped up, so that kissing sound. Um, and then when they look at me, then I would, if they're across the room, then I throw their, my hand. Remember that movement is what will attract their attention. Then they run over, touch their hand. I say marker word, put the treat there. And then if I want them to go this way instead of going to the door, I maybe throw a couple treats over there. What do they do? We just redirected them, ran them off uh, to somewhere else, uh, and we set them up for success. Okay, um, let me see. So uh, other forms of uh, mental stimulation, uh, let me see. Um, well, I guess the lick mat, when they get really licky for you, uh, uh, is it Juno or is it that Juno's really licky? Guardians don't really like her licking after a certain point, so if she licks too much, get her that lick mat. Remember, that's a good way to burn energy and also helps them feel good. Uh, let me see, what else? Uh, training is a great way to burn energy. So uh, do training sessions, two or three minutes. Set yourself a goal. You know, we're gonna teach you to bang your dead. And all week long, you wanna go outside, bang your dead. You wanna get food, bang your dead. You wanna leash, bang your dead. So after a while you say, you wanna, and they go, bang, I'm dead. And so then the next week you come up with a different exercise. And so the idea is to kind of incorporate these um, uh, little training sessions. If each one of you does two two minute training sessions a day with each dog, you're only investing about eight minutes, uh, well, uh, yeah, eight minutes per, uh, per day. But now the dogs are developing new skills that helps them develop self-control. They have more respect for you because you're the one in general and teaching them how to do those things. And so they feel better about you, have more respect for you. It really uh, pays off and it burns energy and it helps them practice self-control. Um, all right, we also talked about, uh, let me see, the importance of rules. Some of the, and I would incorporate the, the relaxation protocol with these rules. Not being allowed to go in the kitchen when we're preparing food. Not be around a human who's eating food. Um, having and, uh, other situations. Uh, you want to go outside? Sit. And then I would open the door. Remember, those that's the pre-mac. So if they don't sit, then I walk away and sit down. Make sure you sit down. Wait one minute. Then go back to the door and say it again. If I say sit and she sits and she doesn't, then I open the door and let her out and don't let her out. And so I'm paying based on performance. And I keep on doubling. One minute, I walk away and then I sit down. Uh, remember, they only have two seconds, you're only gonna say it once. Sit, one, two, you don't sit, then I walk away and sit down for one minute. Next time I sit down for two minutes, then for four minutes, then for eight minutes. And eventually the dog will sit at the door saying, please can I go outside and make sure you go and let him out. Um, let me see, we also talked about uh, petting with a purpose. This is really akin to teaching dogs how to say please or thank you. And so if the dog nudges you or pauses attention like it, like it is right now, I can say sit, nice. Well, you got the treat. So down, nice. Dog's demanding attention from me. I'm telling it, this is what you can do to get what you want. Just like a child says, I want some candy. Uh, would you like to say it again? Can I please have some candy? There you go. So at, we go through these lessons thousands of times. Very few, very rarely do we do it with dogs. And this is why dogs paw at us because eventually we get frustrated. We just give them what they want. Well, that worked, so I'm going to do it again. Let's get them doing the things that we want and rewarding them for doing that. So petting with a purpose is if you would like to pet your dog or your dog is demanding attention from you, you tell it to sit, sit, nice, and then you pet as much or as little as you want. Make sure you pet here, 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 here. Um, and if they don't do it within two seconds of you setting it the first time, show them you got other things going on. There's no punishment, there's no uh, retribution. I'm just going, I'm back to painting my masterpiece. I'm back to writing the song or making cookies or whatever it was you were doing. Playing hard to get yeah, works great for dog training. Um, remember when they do come up and sit in front of you and prepay for the attention, do recognize, reward that, say your marker word. And I want the guardians here, I should have said this earlier, I want you saying your marker word all the time, celebrating everything. So they, I'll do one right here. So celebrating is nice. nice. Did I ask the dog to come to me? No. But when Juno came to me, nice. It got a reward. I said the marker word so they understood what it was and then I provided the affection. I go to the dog bed, every time I go to the dog bed, they say nice and they start petting me. Well, then I'm gonna go to the, nice. I'm gonna to go to the dog bed more and more often. So the more we reward dogs for the things that they do that we want, the more they will do them. Remember, good attention, bad attention, same thing. So if, I, if I'm barking and I yell at the dog, well, the dog, don't do that. But the dog's like, sweet, I get it, I'm getting attention for barking. But if I bark at the dog and then we make the positive interrupter, we're like, you know, like this. Well, she didn't master it very well. But then you give them something else to do uh, instead of going back to barking or whatever it was. So uh, celebrating is uh, uh, basically, Oh, I forgot for petting with a purpose. 
uh, say manners or paycheck or whatever the word is. So somebody, so somebody, say somebody came over to me and said, manners, I would say, sit, nice. Actually, I did ask her to sit. When you opened the door, she stood up and I continued petting, but thanks for reminding me, I do forget to pet without a purpose. That's a perfect example of it. So make sure you were checking each other, say manners, paycheck, whatever the word is that you want. I remember when the dog does the things that you want on her own, uh, there was nothing there that I wanted, but uh, if the dog comes to you, mark a word and pet. If they look at you, mark a word and they pet. They lay down right there, you get to pet and say, nice. She's behind the camera, just nudging her guardian. Now she wants treats from her guardian, but remember, if you're gonna do that, do it right away. So the dog comes up to you and I have treats here. The dog comes up and then lays across my lap and starts nudging this, and then I say nice. Well, then I'm saying nice for punching this. So soon, like nice, right there. So you're gonna say it right as soon as the dog does it. Now remember for marker words, we're gonna say the marker word the instant the dog does it. So like if, if I wanna mark the dog for sitting, I would say sit, nice, and then treat. If I don't know what, uh, the dog doesn't know the, the, the cue, then I would just basically just lure them, say nice, and then release that treat. And eventually I would sneak the word in and say, sit, nice, treat. And eventually I don't have, I don't have to say nice anymore, I can just say, I don't know where you put that, oh, there you go. Sit, I just give the treat because I don't need nice because the dog understood what I did and did what I, or what I was asking, did what I wanted and got rewarded for doing it. So celebration, uh, celebrating is the word we use for that. What, whatever word you want to use, uh, just say that word and that means you should take your partner's word for it, stop what you're doing, say your marker word and pet the dog. Now the guardians also probably need to come up with watch words for over pronunciating the sound or putting an inflection like sit. It worked there, but a lot of times that won't work. And so come up with another word, call it Jeopardy if you're saying too many words or you know, uh, some, somebody with a thick accent if they're saying it wrong or whatever it is. So you're gonna help each other get into a habit of doing it the right way. After about two or three months, you guys are going into a habit, you won't even think about it. If I can want to give a dog an SAT, I just hold my hand up like this and I go like this. Nice, I'm just kind of luring over the head. Nice, and then I pet under the chin. Um, let me see, uh, use those Premax as well and try to activities that your dogs get excited about, like going outside, going for a leash, uh, feeding. Those are great things to incorporate the relaxation protocol and the lessons that we went over here. Help, don't run away from it. Oh, I hate feeding the dog. They're always crazy. I hold it. Hey, don't treats. They're always jumping up on me. Make that a learning ish, uh, a learning opportunity. Create a situation where the dog can practice that. Nice. Outstanding. And then you can help extinguish that behavior. So otherwise, nice. If I'm always just being exasperated, the problem always comes on. But if I'm like, okay, I know the dog's getting excited for the walk. So instead of teaching the dog to be calm when I'm putting the leash on to take them for a walk, I'm gonna take them for a walk in two hours. Let's go ahead and practice the leashing exercise right now. And then we practice a little bit and we don't go for a walk afterwards so the dog doesn't get overexcited. Everyone's was like, is this another fire drill? That's why we do fire drills in schools for kids. So if there is a fire, the student's like, hey, Bobby's not in front of me and this teacher knows. But we practice that in a really calm environment so that, well, I love fire drills when I was a kid because they got me out of class, nice. Um, but that's why we do it. We practice in an easy environment and gradually work up so when the fire actually happens, the kids know where to go, what to do, and we can identify that the kid is missing. Um, uh, get the snuff, oh, something else I forgot. Snuffle mat, I talked about some of that, didn't I? Um, I guess I probably covered everything. Now, if you have questions or anything we went over, you forgot anything, I didn't cover anything, something new, message me, let me know. We're gonna send uh, you to our, uh, our uh, oh, loose leash walking class. You're gonna learn, your parents are gonna learn how to become very interesting to you. All right, well, this is my little buddy, Zoe, and Juno's over there behind the camera, and this is the roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.